we, we never have really talked about because years have gone by, a lot of videos have been taken down off YouTube because of censoring, which we're both opposed to. Um, but a lot of people don't know that I actually helped you for competitions. And um, I would like for you to kind of elaborate on, on how we met and what, you know, how we decided to go forward as far as me coaching you. How I first met you was uh, you had reached out to me because you thought it was interesting some things that I said in the video because it was in alignment with your, th your early theories on bodybuilding. And you were like, how did you know this? How did you come across this information? And uh, I, I said, Coach Trevor uh, was, was to giving me this information. And then, uh, and then when you wanted to connect more, then I asked Coach Trevor who you were. I said, is this someone that I should be talking to or is he, he sounds like he's got a lot of experience knows what he's talking about. Is he full of crap or is he the real deal? And coach Trevor was like, no way. That's goo. That's what well, we nicknamed you guru or mean, but he said, no, no way. That's a mean. That's his initial writings were some of the foundation of this Trevor saying this, some of that foundation of my early knowledge about bodybuilding that made me think outside the box. It was a mean who was, coaching people behind the scenes nobody knew who you were because you were very secretive about it but you had uh, these protocols you had given pro bodybuilders and coach trevor the way he learned is he was collecting protocols of all the top bodybuilders from all the top coaches and coach trevor's seen it all he's seen every protocol from every top olympia bodybuilder and uh, yours came up a lot and it, and it was the way that you were thinking about things was different and outside the box. And that triggered Trevor thinking outside the box. Trevor was then on his way to going to medical school. Right. And so he was deep into biology and chemistry. And uh, that was teaching him all the basics and thinking inside the box. And he found your writings, which made him think outside the box, which led to a cascade of, of other research that he ended up doing on himself and then taking it you know, to, the, to the extreme. Strangely enough, a lot of people that I've helped uh, aren't really adamant about saying that I worked with them. I think that they like to believe that uh, they have this knowledge themselves. It's interesting because it's, it's a business, you know what I mean? But Coach Trevor, being one of the very, very intelligent people and known now in the internet because you've brought him to light, um, by him saying that, it actually validates because I, have, I, I wasn't spoken about. You know, it was kind of like a well-kept secret. And for him to know about me and now getting an opportunity to be with you and put it on the internet, a lot of people know me from enhanced athlete videos. A lot, some people have heard about me from before that, but I wasn't a public, I wasn't in public, I wasn't doing videos. So after we spoke on the, after we spoke and you spoke to Trevor, um, I believe I met you in Florida, is that correct? Yep, that's when we met in person for the first time, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I remember when you first came up to the door, you had a friend with you, I think. Big at Pete. The time. Yep. Big yeah, Pete. Yeah. And, and you came in and we had, we were uh, doing the Miami national show and we had a crew of about eight enhanced athlete right. guys and girls yep. and hottie alerts. And we were uh, shooting videos at the table there yep. and heck you jumped right in and, and started shooting videos with us and, and started uh, analyzing my body composition and, and my hydration and my, my minerals. And we started talking about uh, what to do the day before the show. And you had already been talking to me on the phone about uh, some tips to get ready for that show. One thing stood out uh, uh, that <laughs> blew my mind that still, I still think about all the time. I can, I can uh, say that if you want, what really yeah. stood out. Okay. So I was, I was crash dieting and cause that's what I do for shows. I prepare for shows in, you know, two weeks. Most people take four months. Yeah. And so I, I crash dieted and I was, and I was depleted and I was, and I had to make weight and I was way off from making weight. And you told me to add carbohydrates in. And I said, are you crazy? If I add carbohydrates in, I'm going to gain weight because muscle glycogen holds uh, so much water and I'm trying to get rid of water and I'm trying to get rid of glycogen. That's how I'm going to cut weight. And you said, trust me, please just trust me. I know we have limited time, but what have you got to lose? You're not going to make weight unless you do something different. I want you to have very small 
very, very small amount of carbohydrates like white rice yeah. spread very frequently throughout the day. And I want you to keep weighing yourself every time. And I did, and my weight started dropping and I started getting more shredded and more dense. And it just completely defies logic. Like how no one, I mean, of course, super advanced bodybuilders and coaches now realize this, but it's something that I didn't realize because it completely goes against everything you would assume about how the body works. And, and yet you were right. You know, one of, one of the things, if, if, you, if you don't mind, I can key up on when we got down there, one of the, one of the team, one of the people in the team wasn't doing as well as he could have. And we're talk, I'm talking about Kane, uh, Kane Bishop. Yeah. And um, he had plans on doing something that he had done in the past. And Trevor was concerned about it. And both you and Trevor were concerned about it. And you asked me to intervene. Um, he was going to do a cheeseburger and a sauna. I remember that specifically. And I actually had him do something totally different. Would you, would you feel as if it's a safe assessment to say that I helped peek him for that show at the very last minute? Yeah, yeah, and and that that's right. The hamburger and French fries thing that that that's a great debate topic in bodybuilding. That's something that uh, Bishop had always done, and I didn't really think that that really works for him that well. I think it, there are better ways to approach it. But yeah, uh, he listened to you, which is good. You you got his attention, and and he uh, followed your advice, even though you know he can be a little bit stubborn. <laughs> thanks thanks to both of you guys kind of peer pressuring a little bit but the difference that it made i think is is what got him in his pro car because when we looked at him he was he, he changes very quickly but it was in a matter of 12 hours it was like night and day and then we got him very crispy and dry and, and he came in a, a, a pretty close respectable second i would say yeah and he's going to be i think he's going to compete again uh in the future and so one thing we need to do is figure out how to get him uh, that paper thin shredded skin and vascular because he's got flex wheeler type body structure, the most beautiful muscle bellies, genetically gifted. Uh, but that last little bit of water to pull out for him is very hard. And uh, he gets very insecure about uh, becoming coming in too depleted, which you know at, at, a, at a high level like him, you at a pro bodybuilder level, you have to come in full. You can't, can't come in flat. That's it. You're game over. But at the same time, you also have to be shredded. Yeah. And he's always erred on the side of trying to come in full and, and losing the definition. And we really need to get him ultra shredded uh, because he's, he he's already got the shape. Yeah. He needs to peak a, a, a lot of, a lot of issues that uh, a lot of people have. And I think Kane is one of them. Um, was believing that you need more than you do. You know, like he really has exceptional genetics. And I said this when I was there, I've worked with a lot of people and I can tell when someone has exceptional genetics and you'll hear, you'll hear stories about, uh, I'm just gonna say it because you don't, you don't really hear it so much with Caucasians or other races, but specifically with African-Americans um, or in general, just black people, they, a lot more of them tend to be like scared to take higher dosages. He's not, he, he doesn't mind, you know, he, he'll go a little far. And I think unfortunately, you know, when you raise the bar, you may think you have to continue to raise the bar when in fact a level of optimization for his body is much lower than someone like you or I. You know? do, you, do you know why? Do you know why Bishop w kept going high on the dosages of the, the gear? Because he has never had a steroid side effect. He has never had hair loss. He's never had any uh, sexual performance or libido issues. He's had never had any anxiety, anxious issues. His blood work is fine. I mean, he here's a guy who's been on chronic very high dosages of steroids and never had a single side effect, which is, I think is, it's, it's important that people know that because there's so much misinformation about there, how dangerous steroids are. And yet there's so many people out there who will use them and even abuse them and still not have any side effects. It, it, it all depends on, on your genetic disposition. I mean, like yes. it, just for, for example, and I'm not saying that this is with, uh, with Kane Bishop 
at all. But hypothetically, if you came from a, a long family lineage of heavy drinkers, okay, then your, your liver becomes more adapted to handle more toxins. So then you would actually be more suitable to handle high dosages of toxic steroids without it affecting you as much. On the other hand, if you have history of any type of kidney or liver or, you know, even uh, pancreas issues, you know, steroids tend to, I would say, exaggerate those. So some people, and this is why it's very important that people understand what they're getting into prior to engaging in deciding whether they want to be an enhanced athlete or not. Always need to check your markers. Make sure you know your family history. Make sure you have an idea of where you are now. And that's one of the best things that you contribute to this industry right now is making sure that people really keep up with their health. As a matter of fact, you have, you, you know, so much, you do so much in the, in the times that we speak together. But I've seen on Facebook that now you have a facility for people to get their blood tested and to get checked. Is this correct? Yeah, that's uh, TonyHugeLabs.com. And so it's a lab in Southern California. That, that's where I run all my experiments on. I go down there frequently and I spend just entire 10 hour days and consecutive days in the lab doing my own experiments and testing. Uh, and then we open it up to the public uh, to where anybody nationwide can order the lab kit. It gets mailed to them. They call the number and the phlebotomist comes to their house or their work draws the blood and mails it right back to our lab. I like that. So it, it's like, uh, I think it's 200 and, oh, it's 200 something dollars, I think, two to $300. And that includes everything and the lab results are very fast. Which and is confidential. What, yeah, and confidential. I don't even see the lab work unless, uh, unless someone who ordered the lab asks me to look at it. Um, so it goes straight from the lab technician straight to the, the customer. I mean, this is extremely important. It's needed because there's really, there's no group, there's no organization or any group of doctors that are specifically looking out for, you know, steroid markers, you know, mm -hmm. or hormone markers. It's just, we have that. Okay. Um, and I helped you for three competitions, correct? Two of which right. you won and one of which you placed well. You placed in the top 10, correct? That was the Nationals. Mm -hmm. Right. You won the overall at the L.A.? Right. And, and that's where you got your sword. And you also won the uh, first place at which other show was that? Uh, maybe Sacramento or Sacramento. Tahoe. Maybe yes. like Tahoe. It was Sacramento. Uh, Sacramento. And, and since then, you haven't competed? I competed in uh, – I've probably done two competitions since Los Angeles, I think. At least one. Uh, one, and I came in – I only actually didn't prep for it. I just, I maintain about 9.5% body fat. So I cut for just a couple days. So I shaved off a couple pounds of fat. That was probably in America went. though, was it? That was, uh, yeah, it was in Sacramento. It was always oh, in Sacramento. Okay. So I, I came in at probably like seven and a half percent fat, but I, I, I know how to hide it on stage really well. And, you know, with <laughs> a little bit of manip uh, mineral manipulation, like That's you right. taught me with sodium and potassium. Uh, and pulling the water out, it created the illusion that I probably had around 6% body fat, which is, which is still too high for the stage. But I look like I belong up there. I looked mm -hmm. decent. I got third place, if I remember correctly, in, the, in, in super heavyweight, I think, uh, well, because they combined the heavyweight with the super heavyweight. So I was, I was one of the smaller guys on stage because I'm a heavyweight versus a super heavyweight. Uh, no. But yeah, I looked, I looked like I le belong up there, but I didn't peak so well so i'm going to compete hopefully in the near future and this time i'll plan it a little bit more in advance give some more time to get shredded good and then i'll help you i'll help you prepare for the last few days if you need me awesome um we you did you did have i remember when we first started talking you were very against lasix it was very dangerous you you, you said that it could be, it could be very harmful um we did use lasix for the la uh it, it, it worked well you didn't have any cramps because we took precautions. Um, do you want to right. briefly just talk about, you know, what you, you, you trusted me a lot. I, and, and a lot of people don't, don't know this, but you know, when Tony came to me, he, he, he's a very, very intelligent person. He's not like a lot of other people that come, come to me for help. 
So when I'm asking him to do something, if it doesn't logically make sense, he asks me for an explanation. And it needs to be at a very, very uh, precise explanation because you're talking to someone who has intelligence enough to understand if you're bullshitting or not. It, it needs to make sense. So one of the things that were concerning me was, of course, he needed to drop a lot of weight really quick. We didn't have a lot of time. Um, I remember we had like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was like a day that you needed to make weight. And during the 12 hours, I, this is by memory, because, but you're very unique, so I, I think I recall this correctly. During the day, in 12 hours, you lost seven pounds, is that correct? Sounds about right. Yeah, that's a, that, that's yeah. It's been a long time, but that's that sounds about most right. Most people gain weight during the day, but you lost seven pounds during the day. We right. did Lasix. You did not cramp. You didn't get flat, and it was primarily because of the potassium chloride. Would you say the no salt? Yeah. So so something unique about my body. I mean, everybody loses minerals, but I seem to lose minerals a lot faster than most people. So. I can get sodium depleted, magnesium depleted, and potassium depleted faster than most people, I think, and I'm not sure why. So I was especially susceptible to cramping uh, in preparation for a show, uh, from dehydration, especially from diuretics or, or clenbuterol. And so I was really hesitant to use a diuretic again because I was like, I'm just going to cramp up. I'm not even going to be able to pose. But uh, the main problem was that I wasn't preloading the potassium, like you had me finally do. And when I preloaded the potassium, then I no longer had the, the cramping. And now, and now I also know that, um, because I am more uh, in tune with the side effects of magnesium, that I also need to be loading magnesium, which is kind of probably more unique to me, but also just goes to show how important minerals are in, in for everything, probably the most understated thing in bodybuilding and how to use them. Calcium too. I actually, the, the reason I did not uh, use uh, magnesium and uh, calcium with you was because I was trying to get you to lose weight. They are mm -hmm. actually really, really good and they should be used. But when you do use them, you won't lose as much weight. So we, we had to kind of take one or the other. We were trying to lose really quick so that, but yes, absolutely. Magnesium. Oh, these minerals are ex essentially important. And when you get down to the last several hours of the competition and you think that you need to fill out and you eat sugar, you'll spill over. But if you use potassium, you'll get harder. And a lot of people just don't understand that it's more minerals than it is glycogen at that point. Um, so now I wanted to talk to you briefly about some stuff I discovered about growth hormone going all the way back to, you know, you telling me about you getting growth, you're getting growth, this is a long time ago, so let's, you know, not get into any technicalities or anything like that, but you had gotten, I'm not saying that you got it yourself or anything like that, but you had obtained growth hormone from China. A lot of people do, okay? And you were getting your IGF-1 levels tested. You also got some real uh, growth hormone, uh, nortotropin. I remember this, you told me. And you tested both, you tested your IGF-1 levels after both of them. And why don't you go ahead and explain what happened? Because after you explain this, and I'm going to go ahead and explain the science behind what's been puzzling me for years now. <laughs> okay. Well, the, the main thing that I noticed is that when I combined the insulin with the growth hormone, my IGF levels went through the roof. But if I was just to use the growth hormone by itself, the IGF levels didn't, did, did, don't increase as much. That, that's the main thing that I remember from the early experiments, yeah. And the main reason for that is because I, IGF-1 is actually a, a byproduct of insulin and growth hormone when they go through your liver and then it comes out as IGF-1. So when you take insulin and, and growth hormone, your liver will create IGF-1, similar to, to Incrolex or something like that. In my opinion, because your body is synthesizing it, it is the actual best version of it that you could use for muscle growth. You have to do it in, in peaks though. If you keep it high all the time, you desensitize yourself.